Yes, folks, as promised, I've put together a compilation of some speeches from the Free Speech Rally, which was held in Auckland just recently. Now, due to some time restrictions, I have only been able to give you a sample of each speech, but the following should give you a fairly good feel for what happened on the day. speak a little bit about what we call the silent majority. But first of all, I want to read out to you a, uh, a Facebook post that I recently received, and it went something like this, because I have changed it a little bit in places. It's a German's view on the silent majority, and his references to the past are accurate and clear, and I'm going to be speaking in his, his person. The author is a Dr. Emmanuel Tanya a well-known and respected physicist, a psychiatrist, and a man whose family was of the German aristocracy prior to World War II. The, they, their family owned a number of large industries and estates. When asked how many German people were true Nazis, the answer he gave can guide our attitude towards fanaticism. His answer was quite clear. Very few people were true Nazis. He said, but many people enjoyed the return of German pride. And many more were too busy to care. So he, he was one of those who just thought the Nazis were a bunch of fools. So the majority just sat back and let it all happen. Then before they knew it, they were owned by the Nazis and they had lost control and the end of their world as they knew it had come. His family lost everything. He ended up in a concentration camp and the Allies destroyed their factories. They were told again and again by experts that Islam is the, re is the religion of peace and that the vast majorities just wanted to live in peace. Although this unqualified assertion may well be true, it is entirely irrelevant. It is meaningless fluff, and we are bombarded daily by meaningless fluff, meant to make us feel better and meant to show how to diminish the spectre of fanatics rampaging across the, the, the globe in the name of Islam. The fact is that the fanatics rule Islam at this particular point in history. It is the fanatics who march. It is the fanatics who wage war on any one of over 50 shooting wars worldwide. It is the fanatics who systematically slaughter Christians and tribal groups across Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, there are only two types of people here today. Those that have subscribed to Cross the Rubicon and those that are going to subscribe to Cross the Rubicon. <laughs> right, at the risk of getting a bit of embarrassment. How yeah. many have seen a Cross the Rubicon video? Yeah. Yeah. Put your hands up here when you <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a hell of a fight on our hands here. What are we fighting to save? Well, freedom of expression, a functioning national democracy, and the sovereignty of New Zealand. All these three things are intertwined. If you don't have freedom of expression, you can't say what the problems are. If you can't say what the problems are, 
you can't debate properly about the solutions. If you can't debate properly about the solutions, you don't have parties that are standing for the right things. And then you don't have a functioning democracy. Now, we've already seen from a recent Cross the Rubicon um, channel video, which I know you're all going to subscribe to, how communist and socialist protesters, politicians, professors and other academics, the press and also members of the Muslim community, are all doing their bit to undermine your freedoms of expression. And I haven't even started to talk about your freedoms to own a gun that are also being undermined now. And so New Zealanders, you're having your freedoms undermined. And all this because of what? Because of one lone Australian. Yes, an Australian nutcase who went on a crazy rampage. And it's the right who are being demonised when really, if you did get to see a little bit of his manifesto before it became illegal to do so, you'll have seen that leftist ideology was all over his manifesto. And I'm sick of our freedoms being undermined and that's why I'm here today. Now, we've also seen from other of our videos how the global compact on migration is set to undermine our freedoms of expression, control the press, and grant free and legal other services to ar arriving migrants. And remember, at the moment, as the law stands, it's illegal for those people to come to New Zealand. So the compact will be making something legal that is currently illegal. Now, unelected foreign bureaucrats who you never voted for and can't vote against, I'm talking about the UN here, they've written a document that your government has signed. Now, did your government tell you in a manifesto at election time that they were going to sign it? No, nope, they didn't. Did they ask you in a referendum if you were happy for them to sign it? No, they didn't. And just who signed it? Yes, it was Winston Peters who's made a whole political career out of banging the anti-immigration drum. And their free speech was a very part of our country, a very part of our soul of, of New Zealand. Canada, Hong Kong, Australia, New Zealand, our Western culture, our culture is under threat from losing one of the most precious freedoms that we have, the freedom of speech itself. The ability to share our ideas, to put them out into the community, and to share them, to have fights, to engage in ideological discourse. We find that one of the most basic freedoms is now under assault by the current government, who in 2017 started from the get-go to break down our freedoms. Don't forget that it was also Andrew Little who has been pushing hard for the Human Rights Act review. And it was also Andrew Little who in February stated that they would change the Human Rights Act so that you were going to be against the law if you misgendered someone. Which of course means if a boy says that he is a girl and you say, no, no, you're a boy. You're not going into the changing rooms. You're not going into the sports rounds. You're not going to play sports with real women. That will very soon be against the law. You will be against the law in that. That is disgraceful. We must hold on to the science of biology. We must defend women and women's rights and women's sports in this day and age. How dare they try to dilute it so much that a woman can go into a weightlifting competition and absolutely destroy it. Laurel Hubbard rolled in there. I watched those games in Samoa. The two Samoan second and third place were sad. They couldn't hide it. They were heartbroken because they fought so much, they trained so much. A male has come along and has ripped the Commonwealth records, has ripped the Samoan game records apart because he is a male now competing in a women's sports. That is wrong. And this government is now seeking to make it illegal for you to speak out against it. This is also the same government who has been pushing in schools the idea that your boy and girl from 13 years old and up, if you've got a boy, if you've got a son, a moko, and they say that they're a boy and girl, 
we now have a program in those schools saying that no, you're not a boy, you're not a girl, you exist on an ever-changing <laughs> spectrum. That's what we see right now, right now, and you fund it. Mm. You pay for that program. ACC. ACC, <laughs> welcome. Your taxpayers hard at work. They are now going after the very minds of your children. And for us here, we are gathered here to say no, we do not accept that. Hello, the people of Auckland. <laughs> Last one be a hard act to follow. <laughs> Well, here we are, the white supremacists of New Zealand, according to Patrick Gower and the lying New Zealand mainstream media. We know what they're like before they sit at their computer screens. The far right gather in Alba Park to spread their hate. How can the mainstream media be so dishonest to brand people, good people, who have real concerns about the direction this government is taking this country. And some journalists, Patrick Gower, go on a crusade on government orders to tarnish the reputations of good, honest people by calling them white supremacists. What has happened to this country? But rest assured, the people of New Zealand and indeed the Western world are waking up from their apathy and their lethargy. They're coming to realise the mainstream media isn't there to check the government anymore, but instead work in tandem as their propaganda machine to deliver fake news and manipulate the masses. The government is doing what the United Nations and globalists tell them to do. And in turn, the mainstream media will do and print what the government tell them to do. The United Nations and the shadowy globalist billionaires like George Soros are in the process of destroying our democracies. The whole of the Western world is near tipping point. The people of these nations realise it, but their leaders press on with the insanity of the managed decline of their own nations. True. How do we get to this point where truth becomes lies and lies become truth? When did it become wrong to be right? Governments of the Western democracies were elected by their people only to abandon the people and the promises that they made once they gained power. These governments, this New Zealand government, now serve the United Nations and we the people are being ignored. <coughs> Worse still, they are trying to make us criminals for telling the truth. We are being lied to on an unprecedented and monumental scale. Our institutions have been taken over by common purpose cultural Marxists who are using their power and influence to push through their agenda. Of I hope you enjoyed that, folks.